Welcome to Gypsy Jazz Fridays episode 22 and in this episode we're going to look at some improv ideas for the standard After You've Gone. So I recently uploaded a lesson in my Gypsy Jazz Rhythm workout series and we were taking a look at how to play rhythm for this song and I promised to make an episode about solo. So I'm going to make two episodes. This is the first one, which is for YouTube, and we're going to talk about the biggest part of the song from the beginning until the minor part, the A minor part, and then I'll make another episode for Patreon only, and then I'll be talking about the minor part. But I'll uh, tell more about that when we arrive there. Let's just start with the first uh, eight bars, but uh, we're going to go in heaps of four bars. So this is the first line. It's two bars of C6 and two bars of C minor 6, right? Or two bars of C major 7, That's, that doesn't really matter. And the line that I chose is this one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So C major seven arpeggio up and closure to the C. And now I'm going down with this minor scale. This is just a fingering I like to play over a minor chord. It doesn't really matter if it's a C minor seven or C minor six. It's where you start with your first finger on the major seven, but I think more about the root and I just slide one fret back and then this is the fingering. That's the skill. Doesn't really matter what skill it is, it just sounds nice over C minor and the fingering is pretty easy because you get, if, if you would start from the root we would get 2, 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 1. So that, that is officially very nice to see on the neck. You could even start on the D. So you would get 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 1. Now we switch to 4, 3, 1. And then back to 4, 2, 1, but now white. It sounds confusing maybe when I name every finger, but if you play it, you will see that visually this is very easy to remember, to play. Uh, you'll get this very quickly. So now you have a nice skill to play over any minor chord. You just put your second finger on the root and uh, the fingering is right there. So let's say it's G minor. Well, that's probably too low. We run out of frets. Uh, let's play it here. G minor. I just resolve it to, 
to the B, which is on the next system, to resolve to G. So let's play a solo or the beginning of a solo for after you've gone with these two phrases. And I'll play them exactly uh, as written down, and then I'll talk a little bit about how you could uh, vary them. <laughs> Now, what could you do with these ideas? You could just focus on that major seven arpeggio and make variations. You could maybe play the first four notes and go back, something like that. Or you could maybe start halfway, start on this B, or go up and down. You could play the whole thing down. So you could play those kinds of ideas on the first two bars. And the second bar, this scale, because the fingering is so easy, you could easily make patterns. Right? I just repeat a couple of notes. It doesn't really matter. There's no system. You could just repeat a couple of notes or play them up and down. It's just a matter of experimentation. So let me play it again. And now I'll be free with these two ideas. One more time, something else. Something like that. Let's uh, continue with the next four bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this lick, I like this for G, it's just a typical bebop thing and it ends on the six. Right, this is six, this is the, the note E. And then this phrase for E7, three, four, one. That's a Stockholm Rosenberg lick. But it's outlining the, the sharp nine, the E7 sharp nine. Resolving to the C sharp, which is uh, the third of A7 for the next bar. So if we combine these um, eight bars, so with the first four bars, we would get one, two, three, four. So let's play a solo with those phrases. And I might play the phrases literally, but um, I think I'm gonna improvise a little bit because also these phrases are easy to vary by playing them earlier, later, leaving out notes, repeating notes. It's basically always the same thing. Of course, I can show you for each line how to vary them, but it always boils down to the same thing. You could rhythmically displace them by playing them later or earlier. You could leave out some notes, you could repeat notes, you could embellish notes by playing some chromatics in between two notes uh, that are in the lick, stuff like that. And there is no system to it. That's just a matter of experimentation. And important to realize you don't have to do that. You could also just play these lines. They, they sound great by themselves. So I'm going to play a solo using these lines. <laughs> Let's do another one, another solo. Let's continue to the next four bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm continuing a little bit into the next bar. That's the resolution to G. So this lick, I mean, I, I really wouldn't vary that. I would just play it exactly like it. It's written here. Maybe I could start a little bit later or earlier. That's 
That's a lick for D7 I use a lot. Um, let's continue on with the next four bars before I play a solo. By the way, if you want to have access to this step, it's available on Patreon. Already at the $5 level, you would get access to a downloadable version of this uh, tab. And at the $10 level, you would get access to the Patreon-only lesson that I'm going to make uh, later this week. So it starts with the resolution to G, which I already played. And then from the second bar, we get one, two. Three, four, one, two. So it's a F major seven arpeggio up, which is something I would play over G seven or D minor seven. Uh, works on both chords, right? G seven. And now I'm playing A flat minor with a, an extra note, the nine. And then again, when I do a, a triplet. That is something that works really well over G7 altered. So this F major 7 arpeggio up and A flat minor arpeggio down is a really nice combination to play over a G7. So if I would do that, let's say over C7, I would have to play B flat major 7 up and then D flat minor but down. And then we resolve to C major in the next bar. But let's play a solo uh, from the beginning until here. Using, of course, these licks, but maybe not verbatim. I might vary them or I might change them a little bit. Again, maybe some variations, maybe not, right? So I don't plan these things. I just improvise, improvise with these licks. But that is what improvisation is for me. It's, it's just varying phrases that I know very well. So of course, it's just a selection from the phrases that I know. In a real uh, solo, I would have access to many more phrases, but that's how you start. You take a couple of phrases that work really well on the song and you start varying them. So that's what we're doing in this series. Let's continue on. So again, we get C major to C minor. And I have some really nice phrases for you that sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this is based on a Moses Rosenberg lick, this little lick. Something that really likes to play on both C major and on A minor. Which we can use because if we go to C minor, we can just move this up uh, a minor third. Because if you can play this on A minor, you can play it on C minor here. So even if we go from C major to C minor, I can use that same thing by just shifting it three frets up. And that goes for many licks because many licks will fit both A minor and C major. So I make a little slide, one fret slide. Um, let's continue on before I start improvising. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. So this is a G major 7 arpeggio up. 
this comes literally from my book, the Van Hemert System book, which will be available soon. I was hoping it would be earlier, but the printing got delayed because of the, the whole pandemic situation. But I hear the ball is rolling, so I will keep you all up to date uh, on YouTube if it's there. But this is a phrase that is in my book, part of stuff that you can play on altered chords. So this is a really nice line for E7. E7 altered. And then we are on A minor. So um, let's play a solo using all these phrases from the beginning. And again, I might play them verbatim or I might improvise with the phrases. I went on to show you that these lines, they are just part of a much bigger system of lines that I internalized in such a way that I can flow from one line to the other line without uh, making it appear as if I'm playing separate lines. Because if you're working with these lines, you might feel that way, like, oh, it's really very much cut and paste, and do I have to play this every time? No, that's not the point. The point is that you learn all these songs in this series, learn all these lines and start applying them on different songs in different situations. And that is something that will go slowly, but it will happen once you start working in this way. So just applying these lines, trying to come up with small variations, doesn't have to be super creative. It's, it's more of a, a matter of just doing it. Now, I'm going to continue the song on Patreon, starting on the A minor part, and we have some challenging stuff coming up with B7 to E minor, diminished chord. If you want to have access to that lesson, uh, join my Patreon at the $10 level. And if you want to just download these steps, you can already download them on Patreon from the $5 level. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, give it a like, maybe subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.